Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of A Brush With Death. I am your host Casey Hanale and in this series what I do is I sit down, I tell you a true crime story, and I paint you a pretty picture at the same time. Now if that sounds like fun, stay tuned because I'm going to do it again. Um, yeah, but before we do that, I, I actually, I, if you've joined us for other episodes, I have a nice little spot screen that comes up shortly over here. But before we do that, I want to introduce today's special guest, which is, you can see her back there, Miss Brittany Spires. I painted Brittany a few years ago in the height of hashtag free Brittany. Now she's out. She's out and she's free. <laughs> she's, she's dancing with knives and doing doing Britney things. So you're welcome. I'm sure this painting had a lot to do with that. Anyways, like Miss Britney Spars, um, today's focus or subject is also a very, very talented, talented singer, um, Miss Selena. So let's get into today's case. <music> So Selena Quintanilla, not Selena Gomez, I'm sorry for all the fans out there. You know, I told somebody at work, she's younger, that I was doing Selena this episode and she was just so stoked. She just loves Selena Gomez and I had to disappoint her and tell her like, no, it's not, she's still alive. Anyways, we're going to talk about Selena Quintanilla today. Um, not a knock on Selena Gomez, by the way, Selena Gomez is kick butt, go look her up, different series. Anyways, Selena Quintanilla was born April 16th, 1971 in Lake Jackson, Texas. So shout out to all my Texas peeps. I have been there a few times. I love Houston and I've been to San Antonio. Um, I've never been to Dallas though, so definitely wanna go visit again. So Selena's parents, Abraham Quintanilla the second, so junior, he was a former musician himself, and then her mother, Marcella, she was a homemaker, and they had two other children before Selena, an older brother and sister, um, Abraham the third, and Suzette as well, and then little Selena came along. Um, they had a family restaurant that they owned and operated in Texas, that was their main source of income, and then they kind of realized that all their children had musical talents out you know, the you know what. Suzette played the drums. Abraham was really skilled in uh, guitar and I think he also sang. And then Selena, of course, was an amazing singer and performer. So they started to kind of teach the children, you know, to play in a band and they eventually did start a band. Uh, one thing I didn't know about Selena was that she, uh, her first language is, is langu language, that sounds weird coming out, language is English. I could have sworn it was Spanish because how good she sang in Spanish, but no, she, her first language was English and she learned to sing, her father taught her phonetically in Spanish and she sang all Spanish songs and eventually she would kind of go head to head with her father saying that she wanted to sing more English songs, but anyways, I digress. Um, so she grew up not completely understanding the language and then uh, eventually became bilingual in Spanish and English and that's how she learned Spanish. That's awesome. <laughs> that's kind of a interesting way to go about that but anyways something I did not know. So like I said they eventually formed a band. So when Selena was 10 years old they formed Selena y los Dinos. Yeah. Y los Dinos. Selena y los Dinos. I'm, I looked up how to say all these, so please be gentle with me. It's going to take me a little bit to pronounce these correctly. Anyways, so they formed this band, this family band. Uh, the two older children were also involved. Um, Abraham the third, who they called AB, he played uh, bass. And then the sister Suzette, she played the drums and they played all over Texas. They played wedding venues, they played in clubs, they played wherever they could, and they said that their music style was a mixture between Mexican country and uh, American Western style, which um, is pretty cool. And they, 
came out with a lot of albums that we're going to talk about in just a minute. So, like I said, uh, Selena y Los Dinos came out with um, quite a few albums. They came out with seven. <laughs> seven albums. Can you imagine getting along with your family like that well, where you bang out seven albums? Woof. Um, I love my family. Love you guys. Hi. Um, I'm going to try my best to pronounce the names of these albums. Some of them are in English, so thank you for that. But um, I am trying my best, so please <laughs> don't come after me. I, you know, it, it's going to be a little difficult for me. So the first one came out in 1984. This one was appropriately named Miss Primeras Grabaciones, which means my first recording, basically. So right on point. The next year, in 1985, they came out with The New Girl in Town, which, English, great. Next year, in 1986, they came out with Alpha. And then the same year, 1986, they came out with another album titled Muniquito de Trapo. Try my best. What does that mean? Somebody tell me. I didn't look it up. 1987. I only speak one language. I'm sorry. English is very, very American of me. Don't only speak one language. Okay, 1987, they came out with the, um, oh my gosh, And the Winner Is, which is the name of the album. Now, also, I want to know, in 1987, uh, Selena went to the Tejano Music Awards, and she won Best Female Vocalist of the Year and Performer of the Year. 1987. So if you're doing the math, Selena is 16 years old when she wins these. An amazing accomplishment. Um, so she really started to gain traction and attention from the Latin music world and pretty soon um, all over the world. So that was 1987. The next year, 1988, they came out with Preciosa, which I'm assuming means precious. I shouldn't assume. 1988, same year. They came out with their last album, Dulce Amor, which is very fun to say. And a lot of the singles from this song were written by her brother, AB, so that's pretty cool. And that is the last album before Selena goes off on her own and, um, you know, gets a music record and all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about that next. So many described Selena as the Mexican Madonna, quote unquote, their words, not mine. Um, because she was just a very amazing performer. She had like these sexy dance moves and she had these very elaborate outfit, not elaborate, but you know, she had these like bedazzled <laughs> bustiers and stuff. Um, just very, very captivating. You know, if you see any of her videos of her live performances or just her music videos too, she's just, you know, very enthralling. You can just get caught up in it. So she started to gain a lot of attention and two years later in 1989 she was performing at the Tano Music Awards and music producer Jose Bihar saw her and was like gotta have her so not in a weird way he had just created the Latin division of EMI Records the record label so he right away signed Selena up um what well, she's just she's 19 at this time and she produced and you know recorded and released her first album the same year in 1989 self-titled Selena so that's when she busts out um you know, as a as a solo artist so 1989 Selena is like killing it not only did she sign you know with EMI records and she's producing her first record um she signs as a spokesperson for Coca-Cola. <laughs> like, are you really one of the biggest companies in the world? And uh, that was also a big deal too, because this was the first time any kind of agency like that had hired someone specifically to target a specific demographic, which was the Latin community. And I think they chose very wisely, you know, Selena was so relatable and likable and um, she sh sold I'm sure a ton of Coke products. Um, did she like them? I don't even know, but she acted like she did. By the way, have you ever had the Mexican version of Coca-Cola as opposed to like the American version? So much better. 
my god. I don't know what they put in it. Like, <laughs> hopefully nothing nefarious, but I'm sure it's just like real sugar, but uh, it's so delicious. Go get one. If you can't, then ship out for one. I don't care what you have to do. It's, it's delicious. Go try it out. So just in the next year, so 1990, Selena releases her second studio album, Ven Comingo. So one, two, bam, bam, like she's she's getting them out there. And this was the first Tejano themed uh, record that reached gold status, which means 500,000 uh, copies sold. It is now multi-platinum um, today. You know, she's such an amazing singer and artist that of course it is. But um, so yeah, so that was a huge deal for the Latin community. It was the first one to hit that kind of status in the music world. So now it's 1991. Selena is, you know, doing her thing, doing concerts, recording her next album, um, you know, gaining more and more fans and popularity. And unfortunately, a particular fan attended one of her uh, concerts. Miss infamous Yolanda Saldivar. She saw Selena and just fell in love and she weaseled her way in. Sorry for the word choice. Weaseled her way in to, you know, her manager, which was her father, Abraham, and told Abraham, hey, you should start a fan club for your daughter. You know, there's so many fans out there. We could start collecting, you know, membership fees and stuff and start building you know, your your daughter's fan base. So he agreed and they elected Yolanda as uh, the mem you know, the club president. Uh, she also became really close with Selena, as we'll see. And she started managing her like financial paperwork and also started managing uh, her two businesses that she ended up opening later down the road. And we'll see. <laughs> We'll see where this relationship goes, but already not looking so good. So in 1992, that's when Selena releases her third studio album, number three, Trace, <laughs> um, Entre a Mi Mundo, which features songs like Como La Flor and La, 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 La Carcacha, which is really fun to say. I don't think you're supposed to say it like that, but... It's just fun to say. Um, this one reached 10 time multi-platinum status in 2017, which is like a huge deal. What also happened in 1992 for Selena was she got married. What? We didn't even know she was dating anyone. So she was dating Chris Perez for two years. So in 1990, they um, secretly started dating after Chris joined her band as a guitarist and they were secretly dating for two years. I really hope that they told someone before they got married. But anyways, they did get married in 1992, and then they were married until her untimely death uh, three years later. So they were married for a whole three years. And Chris, you know, Chris is seen in a few of the awards that she's gotten after her death, so you can see pictures of him. Um, I think still very much in love with her, which is really, just really sad but anyways he wrote a book like a memoir about selena um called to selena with love which is very sweet in 2012 and he did have plans to make that into like a series on tv but her father actually threatened to sue him i don't think they i think he actually did sue him but it was settled out of court but um abraham actually owned all of the rights to selena's image her music in perpetuity so um, they had a little head to head there, but they decided to settle out of court, I think in 2018 about that. And there hasn't been any talks about a Selena series since, which is unfortunate because that would be really cool. And if you've heard something about Selena series, let me know, hit me up. That'd be really sweet. Um, cause we got the movie, we got, you know, like the true crime stuff, but we need like some kind of like in depth, in depth Selena stuff. Um, so let me know. Then a year later in 1993, Selena released her fourth, broken out, fourth studio album, live exclamation point. I'm not sure if you're supposed to yell that, but I won't. Um, live 
uh, hit number two on the top 100 best albums that year and she also which is huge won a grammy that year as well for the album best mexican-american um album and you know she you know we're doing math in our heads she was only 22 when she won the grammy so it's awesome she probably would have won a lot more if she had you know been able to be alive but yeah so she won a, a grammy for this album live exclamation point and it's not her last album, so let's keep going. All right, now it's 1994, and Selena releases the last album that she would, um, while she was alive, a more prohibito, forbidden love. <laughs> um, that year, she was also touring in New York City, California, Puerto Rico, and also Argentina, so she's just doing the things, right? She also, on top of all that she also opens up two boutique stores that I mentioned previously that Miss Yolanda manages um, they are called Selena etc <laughs> which what's etc um, it <laughs> they sold you know clothing wardrobe and um, you know accessories jewelry that, maybe that's etc for accessories Anyway, so she opened up those, um, one in San Antonio and one in Corpus Christi. So like I said, Amor Prohibido was the last album that she would see released in her lifetime, but she did go right to work on her next and last studio album, which was Dreaming of You, which was another huge step for Selena because it was going to be um, both English and Spanish speaking songs and it's kind of the first one to do so and like i said before you know abraham really encouraged her to you know speak and sing a lot in spanish but she really wanted to impress and top the charts in the american pop world so she was trying her best to to do that with this album which she would have done um you know it was released three or four months after she died in 1995 in july and it did reach the top 100 charts, uh, the first one to do so that had predominantly Spanish speaking in it. So it was already a trailblazer and unfortunately Selena didn't get to see the, the success of this album. Fun fact about Selena, did you guys know that she was also featured in a movie in 1995? Can you guess which one? It also starred Mr. <laughs> Mr. Johnny Depp. Mr. Who Pooped the Bed. <laughs> Don Juan DeMarco, she plays uh, a mariachi singer in one of the scenes and I just watched it on my phone. And it's, Selena just like takes it away. She's so captivating, like you gotta go watch that movie again if you wanna see her. She's, she really sticks out. So, um, so yeah, she was a multifaceted person, just like Tupac. Tupac was in um, a few movies, remember too, so. Um, it would be it would have been interesting to see if she had any more features if she had you know stayed alive and um, you know more music she would have just been taking over I think if she you know had stuck around so fast forward way in advance to August 2022 uh, Selena's family actually put together 13 unreleased songs of Selena's in the Moonchild mixes um, this was a passion project for the family. Uh, her sister, uh, Suzette, contributed some artwork. Her brother, A.B., also, you know, played and produced a lot of the songs. And they also said that they digitally, like, altered her voice to sound older, which... How does that work? That sounds... cool. Not... I mean... So, like, smoker lung, <laughs> Selena? I'm joking. I'm joking. I haven't heard it. So I want to go listen to it after this and check it out. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I don't know if it's on iTunes or whatever, but check it out. Let me know what you guys think of this uh, technology to age Selena. Is Selena with us again? So to top off Selena's music career, Selena saw seven of her songs hit number one on the Billboard charts and another 14 reached top 10, which 
was a huge accomplishment for a 23 year old. I remember she was only 23 when she died. Um, so who knows where she could have gone if she had kept going. Uh, what is your favorite Selena song? I'd love to know. Uh, you want to guess what mine is? <laughs> it's the catchiest, I think. Bitty, bitty, bum, bum. Bitty, bitty, bum, bum. Anyways, uh, I also like uh, Dreaming of You. That's a good one, too. Um, the one that was released after her death and is in English, so I can understand it. Again, I'm very American. Sorry. All right. Let's get into her, um, you know, her ultimate death, and then we'll get into the trial, and then we'll get into some last, you know, nice little niceties about Selena and really close it off how she deserves. Okay. So let's talk about Selena's death. Murder. It was murder. <laughs> Spoiler alert. So Miss Yolanda. Um... A few months before Selena's death, a lot of the employees at her boutique, so remember Yolanda is the manager of these Selena, etc. boutiques in San Antonio and Corpus Christi. A lot of complaints from these employees saying that, you know, Yolanda was being rude and, you know, maybe calling people names and stuff. I don't know what she was doing, but um, notable to report. And then in January that year, 1995, her Abraham, her manager slash dad, uh, got a lot of, started getting all these complaints from the fans. Remember, Yolanda is also the president of Selena's fan club. And these fans had been calling him saying that they had paid for their dues or whatever, but have not received their membership benefits. So where's all this money going? Um, I'll tell you where it's going. <laughs> right into Yolanda's pocket. In March, a few months later, so March 1995, Abraham finds out that Yolanda has embezzled almost $30,000 worth from the boutique, and I'm assuming the fan pool, and he confronts her about it on March 9th, they said. <laughs> confronts her, and nothing really becomes of it because Selena you know, still wants to see the good in her. And, you know, Yolanda has control of a lot of Selena's, you know, fi finances and stuff. And so Selena stops her dad from going to the authorities, basically, and, you know, wants to make it worth, uh, worth Yolanda, which I think says a lot about Selena's character. And we'll see, you know, soon that it's really going to be her ultimate demise. So... Days before the murder, Yolanda said, claimed that she was sexually assaulted in Mexico. Don't know if those claims are true, um, but being the good person that Selena was, she took Yolanda to a medical clinic on March 31st. So they go to this medical clinic and she gets Yolanda checked out and they go back to the Days Inn in Corpus Christi and they go up to room 158 and we don't know what exactly is said, but we know that Selena basically confronted Yolanda about the embezzling and maybe gave her an ultimatum. We don't know. We're just speculating. Um, you know, she's trying to work it out with Yolanda. Like she wouldn't, she wouldn't confront her if she didn't think she was safe, right? So she trusts Yolanda. And that's when Yolanda pulls a gun out of her purse and doesn't shoot Selena facing her. Selena is running away and she shoots her in the back. Some friend. Some friend. According to court testimony by Norma Martinez, who was a housekeeper at the Days Inn at the time, she was there when, um, and she saw the aftermath of this attack. She heard a sound that sounded like a car backfiring and so that got her attention and she looked out into the hall she sees a woman in a green jumpsuit selena stumbling out of uh, room 158 crying yelling for help help me help me help me she has a gun you know i don't i don't know exactly what was said but she's running down the hall and she sees norma sees yolanda right you know following selena right out the door with the gun and, you know, she's calling her the B word and 
Like, she's gonna die. Like, don't, don't be calling a girl the B word. Anyway, so Norma continued that she saw Selena like run down to the lobby. And then she said she saw later that a police officer was kind of like by the lobby and then was trying to, you know, help Selena. And then saw Yolanda get into her truck and the police officer followed her out and Yolanda had a gun pointed at her own head and had locked the doors, right? She's in this standoff. And she's yelling and screaming, I didn't do nothing. You didn't do nothing. Yeah, right. Okay. Another court testimony by Shauna Vela, who was the front desk clerk at the Dades Inn, said that she, at the time, was checking someone, another customer out, and this woman, Selena, comes running in, screaming, yelling, help me, help me, help me. And Shauna's like, help you with what? And uh, Selena goes, she shot me. He, she's like, what, she was shot? And Selena put down her arms and that's when she saw all the blood. So Shauna immediately takes Selena and she takes her into the back room and lays her down. And then she goes out to the front desk and calls 911. After she's done with the call, she runs back into the room um, you know, kneels next to Selena and she's like, you know, asking her like, who shot you? And she says, Yolanda, room 158. And so Shauna gets all the information from room 158, probably in preparation for the authorities. And then Selena asks um, her to shut and lock the door because she's worried that Yolanda is going to come back and finish the job. <laughs> Poor Selena. So authorities the ambulance and stuff do arrive and they take Selena to the Corpus Christi hospital and there she is pronounced dead from cardiac arrest and severe blood loss March 31st 1995 and she was only 23 years old. So you're probably wondering what happened to our little friend Yolanda. And she is little, she's small. Um, Yolanda was stuck up in that truck for nine hours. <laughs> She knew what she did, but she's saying it was an accident. Anyways, after nine hours, they finally apprehend her and they take her to trial. So they take her to trial. She says, oh, it was just an accident. You know, like Selena was asking for a piece of gum and I had my gun in my purse. And I accidentally shot her. Whoops. I don't think that's, that's probably not the excuse she gave. But anyways, she's saying it was an accident. But, you know, my pal, the state of Texas, convicted her of first-degree murder, hick yes, and sentenced her to life in prison. So she's now in a prison close to Dallas for the next 30 years. And my friends, unfortunately, she is up for parole in 2025. So next year. They better not let her out. You know what's gonna happen to her if they let her out? She's little, she's small, like I said. She's like this little, just a little gremlin. She cannot fend for herself. There is no way, they better put her in like witness protection or something. So like for all my younger, my younger viewers, maybe you don't understand the severity. <laughs> okay, so just, for an example, let's say Beyonce. Selena was really like the Beyonce of the 90s. That's, I'm going to go on a limb and say that. What if Beyonce was shot and killed? Not on accident. You know what that hive would do? I'm not threatening. I'm just saying they better not let her out because something bad is going to happen. They better ship her to China or something. <laughs> Somewhere where no one knows who she is. <laughs> or, you know, I don't know. Antarctica. <laughs> Anyways. 2000, next year, guys. 30 years. It will have been 30 years since Selena was gunned down cold blood by Miss Yolanda Saldivar. Mm. Anyways. Do, do with that what you will. <sighs> They better not let her out. It's gonna be a bloodbath. It's not gonna be good. So the days after Selena's death, um, a lot of fans from all over the world 
came to that day's in and laid out pictures and flowers and gifts in memorial for Selena. And then April 2nd, they had an open casket funeral uh, for the fans and the family. And then she was laid to rest at Seaside Memorial Park. Seaside Memorial Park. Yeah. Seaside Memorial Park in Corpus Christi on April 3rd. Uh, so, so yeah, she, she really impacted a lot of lives. And then, like I mentioned before, a few months later, her Dreaming of You album came out and hit number one, um, on the Billboard charts. And this was really significant because this was the first predominantly Spanish speaking album that, um, did so. So that was a huge impact to the Latino music world. And then, um, the governor of Texas at the time, George W. Bush, uh, declared April 16th, Selena's birthday, Selena Day um, in Texas. So I have never been around for Selena Day in Texas, so I do plan on visiting and, you know, wearing my best bedazzled jumpsuit and my, you know, red nails and my red lips and let's Selena it out, guys. So I'll meet you down there. So I think we all know that Selena um, has been immortalized in more than one way. In particular, the movie Selena in 1997 starring Jennifer Lopez. She was the first Latina actress to receive one million dollars for the role and she was even nominated for a Golden Globe for her performance in that. It was re-released for the 25th anniversary of Selena's death in 2022 and yeah, have you guys seen it? I've seen it. It's good. Um, she does a really good job in it, and I think it does Selena, you know, it does Selena justice. So now let's get into Selena's legacy. In 1998, the um, the family uh, created the Selena Museum in Corpus Christi, which featured her wardrobe, a lot of her awards and memorabilia. It also featured. Um, a recreation of her recording studio and her red Porsche girl what? and her her tour bus there so um, if you've never checked that out I haven't yet um, I'm planning on it uh, go check that out that's in Corpus Christi so not only did Selena get a Grammy when she you know was alive and for her contribution she also was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2017 her family and her, her, her husband Chris accepted the award on her behalf and then in 2020 she also got a star on the Star Trail of Fame outside of the Houston Livestock Exchange and it's like a show and rodeo which is <laughs> a very Texas thing I'm sure. Um, rodeos, if you've never been to one, you should check them out. They're, they're here all the time in Las Vegas and they are quite the entertainment. I was not expecting it. It was my first time. Maybe have a drink or two before you go. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so yeah, so that was outside of the Houston Livestock show and rodeo and she just keeps getting these awards and acknowledgements. She was just a really impactful person. Also in 2020, so that was the 25th anniversary of Selena's death, remember, and her songs became more popular just because of the anniversary and a lot of pop artists actually started covering her songs in their concerts including Casey Musgraves and Cam Camilla C Cabello, I think that's how you say her name. Um, they sang a lot of Selena songs at their concerts that year and then Mac also came out with a Selena line um, with their red ruby lipstick for Selena. This is not, this is Rihanna, not Mac um, because it sold out in seconds probably can't find it anywhere anyways. But yeah, so Selena is being <laughs> immortalized everywhere and um, rightfully so, I think. So I think the two most notable, apart from the Walk of Fame and the Grammy and all the museums and stuff, I think is the 2022, the Smithsonian National Museum of American History obtained Selena's leather jacket and satin bustier from her performance at the Tejano Music Awards in 1994. So you can go see that, I believe in New York City. 
it's on display. And then um, the most important thing I think is Selena was awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award by the Recording Academy in 2021 at the Grammys. So Selena is being remembered in so many amazing ways. And you know, she has, you know, she's a museum. She has a museum. She has a star on the Walk of Fame. She has all of these things, Lifetime Achievement Awards, you know, I think we just need to continue to remember Selena how I think we should, right? That she was this amazing person, amazing performer and singer and, um, you know, just bringing her at the forefront whenever these anniversaries come around. And not only that, you know, just in everyday life. I think um, the idea of Selena and the way she was as a person too is is really important to to remind ourselves of, right? We should all strive to be like Selena, right? All right, guys, so that's the end of our case, but I do like to end on a more positive note, right? <laughs> as positive you can be, it's like a horrible story. Um, but for Selena, I wanted to choose one of her quotes. She had so many good ones out there, but the one that I chose was, if you have a dream, don't let anybody take that away. Thanks, Selena. Do you have a dream? What are you dreaming about right now? Of course you have a dream. Mine has become a true crime portrait painting influencer. <laughs> Can't be much crazier than that. I mean, try me. What are you dreaming about right now? All right, guys. Well, I think we should all try to be more like Selena. Selena was um, kind up until the end. She, there's always room to be kind, right? And I think she really truly believed in that and she was just trying to make it work with Yolanda and Unfortunately, it did get her killed, but I think, you know, being kind is always worth it. So let's try to go out there and be kind to one another. Um, so yeah, uh, guys, I hope you like this episode. I really enjoyed it. You know, it's kind of the perfect thing for me, right? I get to research and I get to talk about things and listen to myself talk and paint a portrait and it's a win-win for me. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you like this episode. I also hope you like the portrait uh, that I did of Selena over here. If you do want your own copy of that, you can go to my website at hanaleiartworks.com and grab your own copy. That's hanalei, H-A-N-A-L-E-I, artworks.com and order yourself your own copy. If you would like me to personalize it, make sure to leave that personalization in the comments section so that I can do that for you. All right, guys, let's go out there, try to be more like Selena, and just be kind to one another. I will see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.